The Hungarian language is one of the most unique languages in Europe, and arguably in the world as well, as unlike most of the languages on the White Devil continent, Europe, it falls under the Uralic family tree, rather than the Indo-European one. Yeah, look at that. Hungary, in the middle of Europe, a very individualistic. Our closest neighbor would be Finland, when it comes to language. Now look at this. So, UK is the most individualistic, and the interesting part is, like, okay, sure, there are other individualistic pieces of countries, but, like, Hungary is just in this kind of like cold spot in the middle of Europe. It's just kind of total outlier. Mm. Otherwise, uh, countries are mostly collectivist. But for some, for some reason, Hungary is just special. One. This in turn has garnered Hungarian a reputation as one of the most difficult languages in the world, often being ordered in difficulty just below the big three, Chinese, Japanese, and Arabic. So it's some Hmm. Well, Chinese is damn hard. Actually, let's, let's start with Japanese. Japanese, you probably gotta learn like 3,000 characters to, to properly read it. But casual spoken Japanese is actually easy. Writing Japanese and reading it is hard. Even the characters are not consistent. It sucks. And also, uh, the language itself has a lot of homonyms, which is a big problem. And it really benefits from just uh, taking English words. I'm not familiar with Arabic. It looks a nightmare to read, <laughs> from what I can tell. But arguably, Chinese is the hardest. A lot of tones and you need like at least six thousand characters. That's insane. Hungarian is very easy for Hungarians who were born in Hungary. They stay there for you know decades. The the trickiest part would be the grammar, right? And uh, otherwise, basically, things are as spoken as, as they're written. So, yeah, Hungary is uh, easy in that regard. You just need a lot of exposure to the language. And it's expressive as well. As someone who spent the past year and half of his life torturing himself one to two hours a day learning the Hungarian language, I feel as no. it is my duty to tell all of you my findings. To what exactly makes this language so notoriously painstakingly annoying for non-native speakers? As most this of guy sacrificed himself for us. You are sane enough not to find out by yourself. <laughs> To start off, Hungarian is roughly spoken by around 13 million people worldwide. Around 10 million speakers live in Hungary, 1.2 million in Romania, 450,000 in Slovakia, 250,000 in Serbia, 150,000 in Ukraine, and the rest can be found in actually functional countries such as the US, Canada, and apparently Israel. <laughs> the Hungarian alphabet is quite simple. It more or less follows the rule most of my Serbian... Yeah, also... Well, it, it's partly Trianon, but also the Hungarians are leaving Hungary. So... The way things are going, eventually there are going to be more Hungarians outside Hungary than in it. Serbian viewers should be familiar with, known as one letter, one sound. Except that some letters are made up of two or more. Either way, reading the language is quite simple once you get familiar with the alphabet. The basics of the language structure is that you have a base word and to convey meaning, you just attach a shit of suffixes and prefixes, and boom, you can communicate. Because of this, Hungarian can get extremely long words, which put even those damn Germans into place. The only language that might beat Hungarian in this regard is Welsh, but no one speaks Welsh, so who cares? You're special. But also, like, you wouldn't really use that many suffixes. Like, two or three would be the tops in most cases. This all is enabled because Hungarian does this thing called vowel harmony, where there are two sets of vowels, the back vowels, o, a, o, o, u, u, and the front vowels, e, 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 u, 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 with e, yeah. e and e. So now this is actually amazing because you need to pronounce it like that. It's not like you drive one hour from one city and like everyone just, you can't understand them. <laughs> no, you, you have to pronounce it like this, which is amazing. The only problem would be that on modern keyboards, you would need to have like 12 fingers to properly type. So, I mean, you have a choice between either you type with English letters or you just type English or you are typing Hungarian, but like it's going to be damn awkward and you're probably going to be typing at like 10 to 20 words per minute. That sucks. And if the word ends in one type of vowel, you attach suffixes with the same vowel type, and that's all the simple stuff in Hungarian. Now let's talk about why I've used my computer during my Duolingo practices. Now, for most European languages, the word order that they follow is pretty simple, and is subject, verb, object, aka SOV. If you don't know what these words mean, click off the video right now and head back to elementary school. Okay, now that most of my American viewers are gone, we can continue. Essentially what this means is that in an English sentence, like I turn myself into a pickle, I is the subject, turn is the verb, and pickle is the object. Similarly, in German, ich verwandelte mich in eine Gurke, ich would be the subject, verwandelte, the verb, and Gurke, the object. Technically, the better translation would be, ich habe mich in eine Gurke verwandelt, but let's not complicate it. However, in Hungarian, this shit is thrown straight out the window, because for Q, that's why. Hungarian follows the word order structure that is topic, focus, verb, and then everything else. Which for Actually, interestingly, uh, Japanese has a very similar word order. So, if I said, like, omae wa nani mo wakarimasen, then it's topic or subject in this case, Manimo nothing understands. So it, it is follows like a verb, a verb at the end, like, but it's like everything else. You're pretty flexible to order your words uh, in Hungarian and uh, the the meaning kind of shifts based on it. 
What are you putting focus on? For a smooth brain like me, it's such a difficult concept to grasp that even after almost two years of studying this shit, I still don't fully get it. Uber kaba hata stopam mogam. Here the meaning would be it is the pickle that I have turned myself into, implying that the speaker hasn't turned himself into an apple. As I've turned myself into. I would say it, it would be a little bit more natural if you said mogam at uber kaba hata stopam. So you end with the verb. But this is totally fine too. Implying that the speaker hasn't turned himself into an apple. As the topic is that the speaker has become a pickle and we focus on that transformation. Meanwhile, in Uber Kaaba Vata Stotamogam, here the speaker proclaims it is I who has turned myself into a pickle. Supposed to someone else. As the topic is I. Yeah. It is I who has turned myself. It usually wouldn't be saying this. I mean, you might say this for emphasis or if you're just a, a newbie learner. But you can, you can think of it in English as well. Like, for example, if I said, don't know, then... Who doesn't know? It's obvious that it's me. If I said, took out the trash, then it's obvious that it's me. And even using his previous example, that I turned myself into a pickle. If I said, turn myself into a pickle, it's obvious that I did it, right? I mean, it's it's assumed that I am the subject, right? In Uber Kaaba, Valtas Totamogam, here the speaker proclaims it is I who has turned myself into a pickle, supposed to someone else, as the topic is I, and we are focusing on the transformation of the speaker into the pickle. And here, Valtas Totam, Uber Kaaba, Mogam, yeah, you might you might say that this could be like an answer that you're emphasizing that it was you. If if someone found you as a pickle, you might say like "Ain't work out about stuff the mugum." So it's the emphasis, like I did it. Into that pickle. But here, otherwise, you would not have it. I did turn myself into a pickle, implying that the listener thought perhaps the speaker was lying. That just feels wrong. As the topic is the transformation, which would imply that. You get it? Yeah, me neither. Essentially, if most European languages had their word order in two dimensions, Hungarian brings in a third dimension and just turns the concept on its head. Where now you are communicating uh, a concept passively. If you're not a speaker, you're going to want to commit ethnic cleansing in the Balkans while trying to understand this. In Hungarian, there are these things called coverbs. Essentially, they are prefixes which you attach to verbs to communicate the direction or the type of action that you are committing. For example, you have ki, which means out. You attach to the verb mediak, I am going, getting the word ki mediak, which means I am going out. Or you have the coverbs such as be, meaning into, attach it to mediak, and you get be mediak, I am going into something. For the most part, these are quite simple to get your head around. In the beginning, they might clash with your understanding of some cases and generally your concept of how language works, but nonetheless, it's straightforward and you can get a hang of it within a week or two of practice. However, there is one coverb which gave me health, and to an extent still does. That being Meg. Now, Meg differs from the rest because, like the previously mentioned word order, it takes grammar into a whole other dimension, which is hard to wrap your head around considering most European languages don't really have a similar concept to it, except for English, but even so, it is not a perfect equivalent. Essentially, Meg specifies that an action is done to completion, or that an action is being done to a specific object, or that it will be done to the specific object in question. For example, in English, you can say, I'm f***ing your mother, and I f*** your mother. The first concept implies that you are in the process of having sexual intercourse with someone's mother, and perhaps you are stopping to explain to an onlooker what you are doing. Meanwhile, the second concept, you are saying that you are currently doing someone's mom. Now, in Hungarian, you can convey this in numerous ways, but I won't be factoring the word order, but just the concept of the mother population. Here we are implying that we are in the process of ravaging your mother, similar to the sentence, I am f***ing your mother. Meg bossom was onyadot. And here we are implying that I promise to do your mother specifically, definitely. Generally, this makes And here we are implying that I promise to do your mother specifically, definitely. This is basically, I'm going to fuck your mother. Generally, this makes my brain hurt because apparently you're supposed to use Meg whenever you refer to the object you're talking about. Like, really specific. Otherwise, your sentence is incorrect in the context you're speaking about, and it's just such a bloody headache. <laughs> Much like English, Hungarian has articles, aka the words the and a slash am. However, their roles are reversed. The indefinite article in Hungarian only has one form, ed, and the definitive has two, o, ish, oz, which follow the same rule as the English, a and am. This is in itself fine and dandy. However, what really grinds my ears about this is that the bloody verbs conjugate differently based on the goddamn article you're using. For example, Roman elop ed pain starts In this sentence, we are saying that the Romanian is stealing a wallet. Roman elopia a pain starts However, if we change the article to the definitive, we must also conjugate the verbs from elop to elopio, which is just retarded considering we already have a bloody article to say that hey. Yeah, that's a good question. I have no answer to this. <laughs> Huh. The wallet is being stolen, but on top of that, one must add six more ways to conjugate a bloody verb because why the hell not? And on top of that, if you want to say that the Romanian is stealing from a specific woman, like he's stealing it from an Austrian woman, we can add Meg and say Aroma Megalopia as Ostrat Nut, which is generally my biggest issue with Hungarian. When speaking the language, you need to be very specific to what you want to say. Otherwise, what you're saying has a meaning not related to the context, which is extremely hard to get your head around, as most European languages are more vague in the grammar and rely more on context. Now, it is no secret that Hungarian has a shit ton of cases, 18 to be precise. And for the average Europe, like you and me, that might seem a lot, considering German has only four, Romanian five, and most Slavic languages have either six or seven. However, most of these are just suffixes that serve the function of words such as from, to, on, below, next to, and etc. And the language can be very specific with them, thus so many. Now, they themselves and their base forms don't annoy me. What really makes me hate myself when dealing with them is that they conjugate with pronouns and demonstratives, words like this and that. Just why? Why must this language torture me so much? Who enjoys this? Who thought this would be good? Yeah, this is not a language that you can study uh, effectively. Uh, well, certainly true for, well, of all languages possibly, but. This is definitely a language that you need to, to just uh, expose yourself to. And eventually you might just get it. I, I, I cannot possibly teach you the way, but I mean, the only effective way I, I would say that you can learn languages that you just continuously expose yourself to it because uh, the rules are just uh, extensive in every single language. You just need to feel it. Good.
another one of my pet peeves with Hungarian language is the way it expresses location when it comes to geographical areas. Now, to say that something or someone is located in some country or city, use the inessive and superessive cases, aka the suffixes bon and shiban, and on n, and un. Bon symbolizes that one is in something, meanwhile on symbolizes that one is on something. And for most cases, when talking about a place that did not belong to Hungary at one point, that you are in it. Like, for example, keyboard Paris bon, who was in Paris. You just attach bon to Paris, and boom. Opposingly, when talking about places in Hungary or that were in Hungary and Hungary itself, you will use the on suffix. For example, Mega Kerhoni, Mega Majorus Agon He wants to die because he lives in Hungary. A literal translation would be he lives on Hungary, but yeah. For my Serbian speakers, it's similar to when you say not Kosovo instead of U Kosovo, unlike with most other political entities such as Uba Gadu, Uba Bodini, etc. etc. Now, all of this is fine and great, however, my problem arises because the language does not follow its own rules. For example, you'll say Mishkolson, a town in Hungary, but for another town in Hungary, Debrecen, you'll say Debrecen. Ben. What's even worse is for a third town, Jöv, you won't even say either of those, but Jöv. I mean, come on. Well, you might say Jöv Ben. So, that would be fine too. So, generally speaking, you would call it like how people started calling it. <laughs> yeah. Generally, you would say in, right? Bon, the language even screws over Hungarian claims over Transylvania because instead of saying Erdian, the grammatical because when it comes to other, yeah, Erdian. So yeah, you would say. Correct way is to say Erdian. What the fuck? Yeah. Hungarian is a peak into the world of how people. But you would normally say in, unless others started calling it a different way before. But almost certainly, you would just say you live in cities. People speak this computer code. But you might say like you live in America, but live on the Earth or something like that. I mean, it all kind of implies that you might not be living in just one specific location, but like you know. The entirety of Hungary, something like that. It's less specific. Cool. All in all, 10 out of 10 language. Perfect language. Let's go.